if you are looking up frumpy in the dictionary, these shoes would be next to it. These shoes would be next to the word. They are the definition of frumpy. They're the definition of frumpy. You know I have strong feelings about shoes. I'm going to show you how to identify the frumpy versions of trends and the cute versions of trends so we can steer our wardrobes in the right direction. Stay tuned. Hello, this is Netta. Welcome to my channel. My whole goal for this channel is to help you build a wardrobe and a style that you love. So you look beautiful, you feel confident every single day. So currently running through another round of my reverse closet edit and wardrobe building boot camp. So you definitely want to hop in and join us and get your wardrobe all situated for fall before you start bringing some of the, the trends and some of the updated pieces into your wardrobe. You want to know what you have and evaluate what you have. Start with what you have. Add a couple of key pieces that, that resonate with you, your lifestyle, your personal style, your budget, all the things. And that's really how you build a wardrobe in an intentional and conscious way. So today I want to talk about the things that I think should not enter your wardrobe. And these are specifically shoes that should not enter your wardrobe. You know, I have lots, lots and lots and lots of opinions about shoes. I have lots of opinions about shoes because often when I see outfits in my VIP group, when you guys share outfits um, in that group, um, you have beautiful clothes at many times when you're looking at, you know, and you share an outfit and you're saying, what's wrong with this outfit? Why does this outfit not work? It's not the outfit. It's not the clothes. It's the shoes. It's not the clothes. It's the shoes. 90% of the time, 80% of the time. It's not the clothes, it's the shoes. The shoes can make or break an outfit. Now shoes need to do one of two things. They need to either add, bring something to the outfit, add something to the outfit, contribute style to the outfit, or they need to add something to you, your body in terms of flattery. They need to lengthen your leg. They need to um, elongate your, your, your lines. They need to just look, kind of blend in with your, with your skin and look beautiful and elongating and polished. So those are the two things that shoes should, should do in an outfit. If they don't do either, then you may want to consider adding them to this list that I'm about to share with you of frumpy shoe trends of 2023. Frumpy shoe trends of 2023. Some of these are full-on trends and some of these are uh, versions of trends that, are, that just don't work. So let's get started. The first is the croc. The croc. The croc. Can't believe I'm mentioning crocs in a video, but crocs are back with a vengeance. And I mean vengeance because they're, they're awful. Putting Crocs on a trends list is like putting flip-flops on a summer trends list. And I actually did see flip-flops on a summer trends list because they were like, oh, thong sandals are back. I'm like, flip-flops have never gone anywhere, but they're for the beach or the pool. They're for the beach or the pool. They're not shoes that you wear out and about. And I feel the same way about Crocs. If you are a Croc lover, I don't know if that such a thing exists, but if you're a croc lover and you're not a teenager, because I know a lot of teenagers wear crocs, um, then my encouragement would be those are shoes for the yard or maybe walking the dog. If you walk the dog and nobody sees you, <laughs> but they're not cute shoes. They're shoes for like outdoor mucking around work. Um, I don't know. They're not cute. They're, they're gargantuan. And like, I, I just don't get it. I don't get it. So Crocs are absolutely, they look like you are walking in cement blocks. They're so bulky and really not at all flattering. They don't bring anything to an outfit and they don't accentuate or elongate your leg line. And so in my opinion, they don't really deserve a place in your wardrobe unless, like I said, they're mucking around shoes. Now, if you like the ease of Crocs or you like other features about Crocs, consider a clog. A clog is going to give you the same comfort, the same ease, the same slip-on ability of them, even the same silhouettes, but much more modern, much more flattering, much cooler, definitely will add something to your outfit. Uh, my favorite clogs right now are the made, are, are these from Madewell are just beautiful. They're very, very comfortable. They're affordable. They're a decent height. And I think that they are a great substitute for the, the croc. So don't wear the croc. Instead, wear a clog. Look, they even have the same number of letters. Like, very easy switch. Very easy switch. You can do it. You can do it. So um, all joking aside, I know crocs are like a go-to for a lot of people. But I would definitely encourage you going into fall, winter, to maybe find a more elevated version that's really going to add something to your chic outfits that we're working on, that chic wardrobe we're, we're building together. 
Okay, the next shoe I want to talk about is the frumpy cap toe. Now, cap toe shoes are so classic and are so beautiful, obviously all inspired by the Chanel classic and iconic cap toe style, but a cap toe um, shoe is having a moment right now. So do they ever go anywhere? No, they don't. They're always in style, but they're absolutely having a moment in the spotlight right now, and they're really good cap toes, and they're really bad cap pa cap toes. Let me show you a bad cap toe. This Guardian pump from Anne Klein, this is a bad cap toe style. It's just a bad cap toe style. It's that gathered a little bit. It's the frumpy heel. It's, it's There's nothing, there's just nothing cute about cap toes. And cap toes can really be borderline. They can be borderline. Um, this is another bad one. This is from AGL. It's a, it's a high-end Italian comfort footwear brand, but I just really don't like this one. It's the Monica Cap Toe Ballet Flat, like the detail on it. So that little line of leather, that little strip of leather between the cap, Part and the regular part of the shoe um, is a dated detail in my opinion. I'm not seeing that on any of the ones that look um, stylish, so I would avoid those extraneous details. You want a simple cap toe. Um, another one, this one is borderline. This is the Eleanor Cap Toe Pump from Tory Burch. So it, if this was a flat, it would be a lot better, but it's got that little heel and then it's the neutrals and it's the cap toe and it just looks a tiny bit matronly. Could this be worn in a way to make it look modern and, and kind of cool? Yeah, it could, but it's a little bit, it's a little bit borderline. It's a little bit harder. So how do you take that cap toe style and bring it into 2023? One easy way to do that is with a sling back. Um, this is the Terra sling back pump from, um, Sam Edelman, the um, Van Ellie version um, that's also linked in the catalog is very similar. This is a very modern and cool cap toe. It's got a slightly squared off toe. It's got the sling back styling and the sling back and the modern toe really make the heel height, which is almost exactly like the Tory Burch heel height, work so much better. So adding the sling back to a potentially borderline style of shoe can absolutely um, elevate it. Um, I, I think we all want that classic look, that elevated, elegant, timeless look. Um, and these comfort shoe versions of, of the cap toe, where, where they've got, they're adding a lot of detail on it that really doesn't need to be on it, um, are not going to give you that look. Here's another beautiful um, cap toe option that is modern and cool and stylish, but also a flat. So you can you can go flat, you can go a little bit of a heel, but my suggestion is if you go with a little bit of a heel to do a little sling back on it, um, or to go with a kitten heel as opposed to a block heel. You just want to, to, to find that balance between that classic and modern look of the cap toe. Okay, the next frumpy shoe trend I want to talk about is the wedge boot. I, this, this hit me like a truck out of nowhere. I did not see this coming. I didn't see this coming. I don't know why I didn't see this coming because I knew the wedge was creeping back in. I just didn't see this coming. I did not see the wedge boot. I, 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 I failed. I failed to see this coming, this trend. And, um, it, Again, there are good versions of this trend and there are bad versions of this trend. So I'm going to start out with the bad versions. This one from Tom's, the Maud Booty, that's just not a cute, that's not a cute, it's not awful, but it's not, it's not a great, it's not adding anything to your outfits. It's not contributing anything to your style. It's just not a great option. Now, this one is awful. This is the Bep Wedge Booty from Fly London. No, these are not that is not a good booty. That is not a good booty. I do not like that. Um, it's 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 just not going to be a great option um, on you. Um, the F mode platform booty from Fit Flop. Another. These look like black rubber bricks, right? Like that's not that is not the type of wedge boot that we need to be looking at. Fortunately, there are some great wedge booties that are even bringing me around to this trend. Um, this one from Veronica Beard, the Arlo wedge boot. This is this is the cool version of those black wedge boots I was showing you. I mean, so much more stylized. Obviously, a higher heel, but it's just a very very cool wedge boot in black. If you want something a little bit more maybe accessible, a little easier to wear, this Dolce Vita Suzanne wedge booty. That's a cool wedge booty. Um, it's a great neutral color. It's got nice modern details and it just looks like uh, a stylish shoe as opposed to uh, a rubber brick. 
Um, this one from uh, Franco Sardo, the Stello Pointed Toe Knee High Wedge Boot. It's a beautiful knee high boot for the season. That's beautiful. I love the 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 smooth polished leather. I love the the toe. I love the wedge heel on that. I think it's absolutely beautiful. A knee high boot is is definitely a key um, trend for the season. It's not really a trend. It's a classic, but it's a key look this season. And the wedge makes it. 2023 um, in a really stylish way. So if you like the wedge heel boot, consider one of my my better options and avoid the ones that really just look like like I don't know like a comfort block. I. I those are not going to do anything to any of our outfits. The next trend I want to talk about is the frumpy loafer. Now, we were seeing very, very chunky, kind of like Doc Martin style chunky loafers in seasons past. This season, they're getting a little bit more classic and we're seeing more of the penny loafer. But we're also seeing these loafers that are somewhere in the middle. This one is from Sam Edelman, one of my favorite brands. I do not like this one, the Lorraine Bit Loafer. If you're going to go for a really classic loafer like this, it needs to be the Gucci loafer or you need to go with something a little funkier and a little trendier. This to me is a man shoe. It's a man shoe. It's a shoe for men. Like that, there's no difference between that and a shoe, a loafer that maybe that your husband would wear. Um, I don't know, I don't like that at all. Um, so instead, a better version from Sam Edelman is their Colin Penny Loafer. That's a little bit more, Penny Loafer is just obviously very, very, very classic, but it's also having a moment in the spotlight right now. So a Penny Loafer might be a good option for you. Um, I like this classic loafer, but especially in silver from Tory Burch. I feel like the other colors is a little more borderline, but I, I really do like it in um, in this silver. I think if you want to update a shoe, update the material or the color. Um, that's going to be an easy way to do it. So this maybe in brown is going to look a little borderline, but in silver is like perfect. Um, I also really like these Korean lug sole loafers from Madewell. These are really, really nice. Um, that's a cool um, cross between a penny loafer and a little bit of a lug sole loafer. So it's a nice updated version. Um, Jeffrey Campbell has these velveteen bit loafers. Those are so cool because again, you've got suede updating the classic loafer style and making it more modern and, and bringing something new to your outfits. Um, this one is a, an absolute hard pass. This is a loafer with a heel, the Miramar Penny Loafer Pump from Linea Paolo. New. No, those are so bad. Like I really think that, that that's probably the shoe that's next to the definition of a frumpy pump in the dictionary. It's that shoe. It's, that's the frumpy pump shoe. That's the frumpy pump. Okay, so loafers, you want a penny loafer style. You want a, a, a style that's somewhere between chunky and man shoe um, you wanted to contribute something to your outfit maybe look for um, interesting colors interesting materials um, maybe a metallic something to bring something new to your outfits okay the final shoe category i want to talk about is the low pump the low pump um, somebody in my comments called this the frump pump and it's possible that some of these are frumpy um, and that's what we're trying to steer clear of right because i am all here for the kitten heel and the block heel lower pumps they can be so beautiful and they're very much on trend and they're very very stylish um, when chosen properly and then there are really awful ones they're really awful ones too so we're gonna identify what makes a low heel pump fashionable and what makes it frumpy. So let me show you um, an example of a frumpy low heeled pump. This is um, the Caldez pump from Easy Spirit. This is a frumpy low heeled pump. Now, even if the pump was, a, if the heel was a little higher, it's just a frumpy, it's just a very, very frumpy pump. Um, this, is an, this is another caps, uh, cap toe pump, but this is the Lucinda cap toe pump from Easy Spirit. Notice it's the silhouette of the pump and the heel itself, and then the other details that make this um, just a, f a frumpy pump. It just makes it a, f a frumpy pump. There's just no, there's no getting around it. Now, how do you take that, that comfortable heel height and make it more modern? I'm gonna show you. This um, Tory Burch Georgia pump, this is a great update. Now, the fact that there's a contrast between the shoe and the pump and, and the heel color, the, the more interesting details, the um, squared off toe, like those details are what takes this um, classic pump and makes it more modern and makes it much more wearable and much more stylish. Um, the other way to do this is to change the material. Like I said with the loafers, like if you make it suede, 
that's going to go a long way towards making the pump less front frumpy so even just taking those easy spirit pumps if they were in suede they would have looked a lot better but this um Franco Sardo Diva pointed toe pump. Notice not only is it suede, but it also has a kitten heel. So changing out the, the black heel for the kitten heel has made a difference in these, although even in a black heel, this would have been a great pump, but then that suede in that beautiful neutral color absolutely works and, and, and makes this more modern. Another detail that will take a pump from being frumpy to being fashionable is to make it a slingback, like I had said earlier. So this scarlet slingback pump from Bella Vita, um, this, the fact that it is, um, has a slingback and a kitten heel and is in suede makes this a much more stylish low heeled pump. Um, I also really love this Terra slingback pump from Sam Edelman, this is the same one I showed in the cap toe style, but this is their silver version. So again, you've got the sling back, you've got a squared off toe, and then you've got a finish that updates it. So that silver is gonna be an easy update. Um, if you still really want a classic dark neutral low heeled pump that's not a kitten heel, the sculptural heel and style of this Franco Sardo racer pointed toe pump is going to be a better option than some of the others I showed you. So it's still got that very classic pump look, but it's more modern. It's got a, a more elongated toe. It's got um, just a, a, a sleeker appearance overall. The final option um, I want to show you, this is the, the Georgia pump that I showed you from Tori Birch. This is in another color. Like just the fact, again, that the, the, the heel is contrasting and this is a cool metallic heel. I think it's a metallic heel, but it's definitely a lighter color. This makes this pump um, definitely more modern. So be careful with the low heeled pumps because we know like a low heeled, um, block heeled round toe pump in bone or sand is 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 kind of a quintessential mature looking shoe so we, we want that same comfort and we want that same versatility but we want it in a more modern version again shoes should do one of two things they should contribute add something to your outfit say something about your style or they should elongate your leg and add flattery so um, these frumpy shoes don't do either. So we really want to choose our low heeled pumps um, with caution because there are a lot of fabulous ones out there and I'm here for them. They're comfortable, they're wearable, they're walkable. They allow you to dress up in a you know different way than just wearing a flat with your dresses and at the same time, they're not stilettos. So I'm gonna have a lot more fabulous low heeled pump options for you in the catalog. There's always a catalog link below any of my videos where I mention items like this. Um, don't forget to like this video if you liked it. Subscribe so we can keep hanging out uh, and let me know which of these shoe trends frumpy shoe trends um, you hate the most. If there's any of the options here that you liked that I showed you, um, let me know in the comments. Always love discussing with you guys. I'll see you in the next video.